Hello everyone, welcome back to Bootstrap Workbench. Today I wanted to talk about uh, checking your frequency accuracy if you're using the IC7300. Uh, this is also going to be applicable to any other HF radio, but you'll have to figure out the uh, settings to accomplish that. In this case, uh, of course you could do this process using a communication service monitor. A lot of people do not have those, however. So what you can use is your region's uh, international time standard. In my case, I live in North America, in the United States, so I'll use WWV. Uh, if you're in Canada, you could use CHU. Uh, if you're in the UK, MSF. And there are other standards around the world. I'll post a list of those and the details down below. So, the first thing we'll do is power our radio on. And I've already set up on 5 MHz. Of course, you could do this on any of the uh, standard frequencies, 2.5, 5, 10. Uh, 15 megahertz, uh, whatever happens to be propagating well and uh, is uh, currently in service. So, uh, being on 5 megahertz, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your radio is set properly. Uh, you want to make sure that you have your RF gain turned up. So if you see RFG, you've got your gain turned down. I'll set the knob until RFG goes away, but I don't want to turn it so far that uh, the squelch becomes engaged. The other thing you want to do is uh, set your audio for a level that's comfortable. I'll leave that turned down just a little bit until we're ready to start the process. Uh, you'll want to make sure that uh, twin passband tuning is uh, set to default. The way to do that on the 7300 is to press and hold the twin PBT center control for one second, and it's cleared. Your operating mode should be upper sideband. There we go. Uh, you should make sure that RIT is turned off, receiver incremental tuning. Uh, you would see RIT on the screen if it was engaged. In this case, it's not. So, the next thing that you'll do is uh, you'll uh, tune one kilohertz lower than the uh, standard time frequency. So in this case, we'll go to 4.999 double aught. Uh, the next thing that we'll do is we'll set our calibration marker to on. So we'll go to menu and set and function. You'll scroll down to the bottom. The last two items are calibration marker and ref adjust. So we'll turn calibration marker on. And next we'll go into our ref adjust. Uh, if you think this might be accurate, or even if you don't think it's accurate, I would uh, document where you're at uh, with your current setting. So I'm going to document that we're currently at 27%. And then after that, I'm going to turn the volume up so that you can hear what it sounds like when I uh, set for zero beat. Now currently, we're on frequency. But if I tune off, you can hear the tones beating. And as I get closer to 27%, You can hear that the uh, the time between the beating is uh, is smoothing out. It's becoming a longer pulse interval. And as I get on to 27%, you can hear that uh, the beat has gone away. Now, as soon as the uh, voice enunciation has stopped, I'll tune to the other side so you can hear that that sounds the same with the uh, the two beating frequencies. So as I tune back closer to 27%, and of course your radio could be different. It's not going to be 27% in all cases. That's why it needs to be zero beat against a precision signal. And this is the most precision signal that we have. So once you're on, you're zero beat, and uh, that's pretty much as accurate as you're going to get with the current equipment. So. Uh, that's pretty much how you would set this uh, on other radios, like, for instance, the Kenwood TS430. You tune to the uh, carrier frequency in uh, either lower sideband or upper sideband, and uh, you switch back and forth, and you'll be able to hear a tone in the audio. And as you switch back and forth, you can tell there's a difference in that tone. You adjust the uh, frequency, stability of the radio, or the frequency of the radio, to the point where... Uh, you no longer hear a difference in tone. 
In fact, uh, one of my future videos will be about that. I'm currently working on Ken two Kenwood TS430s here, and uh, that's part of the process I'm going to have to go through, is making sure that they're set on frequency properly. So if, uh, if you have any questions or comments, make sure you put those down below. I hope that you have found this video informative. Uh, actually, <laughs> let me go ahead and exit out of this. Uh, you'll want to make sure you set calibration marker back to off. Otherwise, you'll have peaks everywhere and you'll be wondering what's going on. We can go back to AM, set back to 5 megahertz, and we're hearing the signal correctly. So that's pretty much it. I hope you found this video informative. I also hope that you have a great day, and thank you very much for watching.